build up near the Ukrainian border as the alliance's chief and U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken met with a Ukrainian delegation in Brussels. NATO chief Jens Stoltenberg asked Russia to halt amassing troops near Ukrainian border. The remark remark comes as NATO held an emergency meeting of allied foreign and defense ministers. Russia's uh, considerable military buildup uh, is unjustified, unexplained and deeply concerning. Russia must end this military buildup uh, in and around Ukraine, stop its provocations and de-escalate immediately. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said that Washington firmly supports the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine. This comes amid concerns of a fresh flare-up between Ukraine and Russia. Kremlin has warned U.S. against sending warship close to Crimea. The United States stands firmly uh, behind the uh, sovereignty and territorial integrity of of Ukraine, uh, and uh, I'm here to reaffirm that with the, uh, uh, the foreign minister today. Uh, and that's particularly important at a time when uh, we're seeing, unfortunately, uh, Russia uh, take uh, very provocative actions uh, when it comes to Ukraine. We're now seeing the largest concentration of Russian forces on Ukraine's borders since 2014. Uh, and uh, that is of deep concern. Uh, not only to, uh, to Ukraine, but to the United States and indeed uh, to many of our allies and partners. Ukrainian Foreign Minister, who held talks with Blinken, said that Russia needed to be made aware the price for the aggression against Ukraine will be too heavy for it to bear. Unquote. Earlier, Ukraine said that Moscow refused to hold talks with Kiev. By gathering today, we try to avoid the mistake that was made in 2014 when Russia was ready to act swiftly and pursue its military goals in Crimea and Donbas while our Western partners were considering their reactions to what was happening on the ground. Russia will not be able to catch anyone by surprise anymore. Tensions have risen in Donbas, which has been gripped with fighting between pro-Russia separatists and the Ukrainian army. Troop buildup has also been seen in Crimea. The United States says that Russia has amassed more troops on its border along Ukraine than at any time since 2014 when Moscow annexed Crimea from Ukraine and backed the separatists in Donbas. Major combat in Donbas ended with a truce agreement in the Belarusian capital of Minsk, and that happened in 2015, whose impl implementation France and Germany have helped to oversee. However, sporadic fighting continues despite repeated attempts to implement a ceasefire. Joining us on this broadcast now is VN correspondent Stuart Smith, who's joining us from Brussels. Stuart, Donbass is a highly volatile region, isn't it? Uh, Kiev says that in the seven-year conflict, 14,000 people have died in these seven years, and NATO is now concerned of uh, the Donbass region becoming another Crimea, isn't it? Yeah, the NATO situation, as things stand, is very strong words from U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Jens Stoltenberg, Secretary General of NATO. But so far, no commitment. Now, the Ukrainian foreign minister was hoping for some firm uh, policies on the line from NATO. And NATO indeed has expressed strong support. The question will be, will NATO step up and offer anything more than just words? And foreign ministers, defense ministers of NATO are gathering by video conference today and in Brussels itself we have the US Defense Minister and the US Secretary of State with Jens Stoltenberg. So very high level meetings going on about what NATO can offer to Ukraine to back up these words of support, whether that might be further sanctions against Russia, whether that may be arms or weapons to Ukraine or even military support. NATO though keen to make sure that it doesn't uh, further, uh, further uh, encourage Russian aggression. Russia says 
it is not being aggressive. It's simply moving its troops around the country as part of a military exercise and has every right to move troops within its own country. The disagreement comes in that Russia sees Crimea as Russian territory. So by moving these troops to the Crimea Peninsula, Ukraine is very alarmed and so are the NATO states. And so alarmed that uh, President Joe Biden spoke with Russian President Vladimir Putin last night, uh, US time, and speaking to him about what's going on and trying to encourage him, according to White House uh, press secretary, that uh, to stand down and uh, lessen the uh, aggression, take the heat out of the issue. President Vladimir Putin's side said they discussed uh, what to do about the situation in the format of the uh, Minsk, Minsk Agreement, which is the uh, agreement which Russia came to with Ukraine about how to resolve the situation in Ukraine. But also coming from that conversation with Joe Biden, he suggested to Russian President Vladimir Putin that they could meet in person, potentially at a third country. So talks happening at the highest level around the world, but also here in Brussels. Stuart, you're absolutely right. The big question remains, uh, what can NATO offer Ukraine apart from the meetings and the words that they have offered so far? But the uh, United States is sending its warship in the Black Sea region and uh, Russia responded by calling the U.S. an adversary and warning the U.S. warship to stay away from the Crimean region. Is a one-on-one -on -one meeting between Joe Biden and Vladimir Putin the only way forward from the situation? How will NATO and Russia decide to de-escalate the situation from here on? Well, there are already a number of proposals. For example, uh, uh, Zelensky, the Ukrainian president, will be meeting with Emmanuel Macron on Friday, most likely. That's been penciled at least. And this is something uh, called the, uh, the Normandy um, type uh, Normandy format type of meeting between Nor uh, France, Germany, uh, Ukraine. And that's one method by which these talks have been going on for the last few years, this kind of agreement amongst Western nations to come up with a solution. But realize this is more than just about the territorial sovereignty of Ukraine. There's also a lot of other factors going on here. There's uh, the uh, backdrop of the uh, Alexei Navalny humanitarian case. There's the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, which is being proposed by Russia and built from Russia to Germany, avoiding Ukraine. Uh, Europe supports that pipeline. The US does not. There are many issues uh, going on between Europe, America and Russia, which all have to be taken into consideration when trying to work out some sort of solution. And NATO is part of that, but NATO is not the only uh, organization which will have an opinion about how this should be resolved. Um, uh Stuart, one final question to you. How will this play out for Vladimir Putin back home, especially with elections looming? It's certainly one of the considerations. President Putin knows that he gained a huge boost in support after the annexation of Crimea in 2014. And so this could be one move to try and further strengthen his electoral support after what seems to be so far uh, quite poor polling for the president in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic and the state of the economy. So military engagement would potentially help President Putin. What would not is a war in Ukraine, which sees Russian soldiers coming back in body bags. So he will be aware that this is a very sensitive issue, not just internationally, but within Russia as well. Stuart Smith, thank you so much for joining us from Brussels and getting us the latest on this uh, massive international story.